Okay, this is a demo of just one way to visualize a concatenative language. You know, I know we're going to be talking about concatenative languages a lot. If you don't know what that is, follow the link in the comments. I'm not going to explain it here. Um, just one quick little demo, though, is uh, it's a lot like an RPN calculator, of course. Uh, what you can see is the visualization here is that the stuff on the to the right of this red line is the program. It's just a queue of words, a bunch of some literals and some primitives and things. This area is for what's coming up next, and everything to the left is the stack. So you can see that uh, as you step through this thing, I can just step, shows me that the what's up next is this instruction, which is a three literal, so it just gets pushed to the stack. Next is a four, just gets pushed to the stack. Next is a multiply, which pops two things from the stack, multiplies them, puts the result back. And then the five just gets pushed. And then the addition pops two things, adds them together. And so it's just like an RPN calculator. Um, some more interesting things that you can do, though. Let's see. Uh, here's a, a word for calculating whether three numbers are a Pythagorean triple. Um, now I can use just the arrow keys on the keyboard instead of this step into, over, and out of thing. But So the left key does step into. So I can just step through things. That pushes those numbers on the stack. Next up is this word is pith. Uh, and I can either just step left and execute it, and it says true for those numbers, or we can do that again. And uh, you can see it has this right arrow next to it. That means it's not a primitive word. I can expand its definition on, back onto the program queue so that I can see how it's defined. So that's kind of the equivalent of stepping into a function call. So step into, and now that expands to those things. So is pith is defined as this sequence of things. So then we can step through some more. Okay, bury two, that's going to take the thing on top of the stack and bury it two levels deep. So that's right now it's three, four, five on the stack. Now it's five, three, four. X squared just squares the top thing on the stack. And then swap is a primitive, swaps the first two things on the stack. Square that one also. Add them together. Take the square root of that and see if that's equal. That's how his fifth is defined. Um, and you can go in deeper, you know, you can see that even is pith was not defined only of primitives. Um, Barry 2 is doing a bunch of complicated things. It's actually using quotations, pushing a quotation that some code now ends up on the stack. Okay, and we'll talk a lot about quotations as we go through other concatenative languages and ways of visualizing that. But, uh, you know, x squared is actually not a primitive even. That expands out to just dupe times. Yeah, it's the same as squaring, right? Take whatever's on the top, duplicate it, multiply it by itself. You can also see there's this little blue dot here. So when I just expanded x squared, that became dupe times on the program stack and got you know inserted in front of everything else on the program stack, but with this little blue dot here. So what I can do is if I want, I can either you know step through those things, just like normal, or I can step over, I can either use the right hand arrow key or click this and that will jump to the blue dot. So basically every time you expand a definition, it gets prepended to the uh, program queue with a marker. And you can skip ahead to that marker, and that's the equivalent of stepping out. So just this simply, and this visually, you get uh, you know stepping over, stepping into, and stepping out of functions. It's a full little debugger and uh, execution engine all in one. Um, let's see. Yeah, you can see this is really defined as a lot of work get, getting done to do this pith. If you just expand everything. Um, let's see some other interesting things we can do. Not everything has to do with math. You could do push a string onto the stack and determine if it's a palindrome, which is going to do a few things. Uh, normalizes the string, takes the space out of it, so it's just race car without space. Duplicate that, reverse one copy of it. it. Happens to be the same when it's reversed, but that's what we're checking here. So that means that that is a palindrome. Um, let's see, you know, you can do factorial and some other things like that. Uh, it actually integrates in with uh, HTML5 uh, Canvas, and so I've got some words that do things like drawing. A nice uh, fractal curve here. Or just drawing some random things. Let's see, what does this look like? Draws a flower. So anyway, it was just an interesting little language, um, concatenative thing. It's all built in just JavaScript, HTML, but the interesting thing I think is this debugging environment. 
you know, you can just take some definition and just step through it and see, okay, what is area? Well, area is this is the area of a circle we're talking about. So it's x squared pi times. And x squared itself is dupe times, you know, so, okay, dupe times pi times. It's just kind of nice. It's a wonderfully simple, easy way to visualize what's happening and step through into and out of functions as you go along. Nice little debugger. That's kind of the takeaway from this little prototype. It's the uh, nicety of the visualization of stack to the left, program to the right, shifting things around to ex show them being executed or pushed onto the stack, and being able to expand things back onto the program queue to do debugging.